In this video, I'm going to show you how to write a Python program to use adaptive step size control for solving an initial value problem. Now, in previous videos, I've shown you how we can code up the RK4 Runge Cutter method in Python. So if you haven't seen those videos, I suggest you go and watch those now. And what I have here is, so, uh, is the, the method coded up. Okay, and what I've do also done is I'm using the method to solve this ODE. Okay, so it's got an ODE function here. Uh, we've got our T-span, which are uh, boundaries of the T-domain. I've got my initial value on the initial solution, Y0, and I've got my constant step length of 0.1. And if I scroll down, you can see we've got this solution here. Now, ordinarily, the RK4 method is quite accurate, but what's happened here is the step length is too large to be able to capture the solution. So this solution starts off as a steep uh, line, and the step length here is too large for it to capture. Okay, so what we're going to look at is step size control method. Now, what a step size control method does is it calculates solutions using two orders of accuracy, so one lower, one higher. Then it calculates the difference between those solutions and it um, adjusts the step length accordingly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to um, use what's called Felberg's 4 5 method, and I'll just bring that in here. Okay, so this is Felberg's 4-5 method with the butcher tableau. It, you might recognize the sort of standard butcher tableau, but here we've got two rows of B values. Okay, so what this means is the first row calculates an order 5 solution using the C values and the A values, and the second row of B calculates an order 4 solution using the same C and A values. So it's an embedded, two methods embedded in the same butcher tableau. So you can see we have six stages. So what I'm going to do is here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in uh, a function. Now the reason I pasted it in is these um, these coefficients here. Some of them are uh, quite sort of complicated fractions, so I didn't want to have to um, sort of what you watch me struggle to, to type those in. But you can see where I get those values from. Okay, now this rkf45 function that has the same inputs as my rk4 method so the function name f uh, t your y and h which is step length so you can see but this time it returns three values so it returns a fifth order solution a fourth order solution and the order four okay now that's important okay so what we're going to do now is I'm going to write a solver function, but this is going to be using step size control. Okay, so this function is going to have a similar inputs as my solve IPP function. Okay, but I'm going to call it solve IPP SSC for step size control. So it's going to have a similar inputs, but we're going to add another input for the tolerance. Now this is the accuracy tolerance, um, which I'll explain in a minute. Okay, now we're going to be using different values of step sizes, so we don't know in advance how many steps we're going to need. So instead of being able to calculate t, uh, as we have down here, the only value of t we know is the initial value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize your t and y arrays. I'm going to initialize t to be an array of 10,000 values of 0. Okay, and I'm going to do similar for the y array. Okay, so I'm going to give y array 10,000 rows and the same number, some, same number of columns as y0. Okay, so this means I can, uh, my solver can cope with um, systems of ODEs. So the first value in the t array is going to be t span 0. Okay, because that's the only value of t I know. And the first va values in the y array is going to be y0. Now, in the solve IP, solve IBP function, we had a constant step length, so we knew in advance how many steps we were going to use. Well, with step size control, we don't, so we need, need to use a while loop instead of a for loop. Okay, so to start with, I initialize our step counter, n, to be 0, and I'm going to loop while tn is less than t span 1. Okay, so while tn is less than t max, uh, the first thing I'm going to do inside the loop is ensure uh, that t 
t does not exceed t span uh, t max sorry okay so what the way i do this is i limit h uh, to be the smaller of which uh, out of h or t span 1 minus tn okay so if i'm almost at the end of a solution um, this will kick in here so it means we're just the our last value of t will be equal to t span 1 or t max so now i calculate the order oops, about calculate wrong calculate order p and p plus 1 solutions okay so this is um, uh, down here so this is my rkf45 but i've called it solver here so this this function knows it is solver so i'm going to say yp1 yp and p so yp1 is just the order p plus 1 yp is the order p solution and p is the order okay so that's going to be solver and the inputs are f tn yn and h okay now we've got uh, an order p plus one an order p solution now we need to determine uh, whether the step was successful okay and what i mean by that is is the difference between yp1 and yp is that small okay and so to calculate the distance between the two so yp1 minus yp but we need the absolute value so i'm going to use the numpy abs function and if this was a system of equations, so we've got a y0 is a vector, we need the largest difference between the two. So essentially the worst case scenario. So delta gives us a measure of how accurate that step has been. Now, if delta is less than tolerance, this is the additional input we put in, we say that the step was successful, it's accurate enough for our needs, and we can move on. So I update ym plus 1 to be yp1. I also have to update tm plus 1, which we didn't have to do before, but now we, because we're using uh, different values of h, we do. And I also need to increment the step counter. Okay. After doing that, we need to adjust h. Um, so we need to calculate a new value of h. So calculate new value of h. Okay, now this is going to be multiplied. So we're going to multiply h by the tolerance divided by delta to the power 1 over p plus 1. Now, if you're not sure where this comes from, I suggest you just take a look at my uh, lecture notes. Uh, the link is in the uh, description in the video. Now, this is a ratio. Now, this will sort of be... Um, it, can through computational rounding actually make h go a bit too uh, a bit too large and cause the next step to be unsuccessful so i'm going to multiply that by 0.9 which is what is essentially a safety factor so i'm not going to go as as far as i could i'm just going to sort of reel it in a bit what i also want to do is i never want h to change by more than double okay so it's not usually it's not a good idea to have h changing uh, too much so i'm going to limit h to no more than double but I also don't want it to half uh, or reduce by more than a half so I'm going to limit that as well so this max a half min what this does is it ensures that the ratio of old h to new h is between a half and two and then I'm going to output so we're going to return t and y uh, a problem we have is we didn't know how many steps are going to be used at the beginning so I just said, okay, let's use a large amount, 10,000. But we're not going to want to return all of those 10,000. So I'm only going to return up to the n plus 1. Okay, so that will just uh, get rid of all those zeros which we haven't used. Okay, uh, that's what we're going to return. So if you have a look at this, uh, this while loop, okay, so if it was successful, we update the solution and move on, and then change the value of h. If it was unsuccessful, what will happen is delta will be larger than tolerance. So if delta is larger than tolerance, this bracket here, that will be um, smaller than 1. So that means we're reducing h. If delta is less than tolerance, this bracket will be larger than 1. So hence, we're increasing h. Okay, so I need to make some changes to the code down below. Okay, so 
what we're doing here. Um, so this is my RK4 solution. I'm just going to change the values of T and Y there. Okay. Because we're going to be using the step size control method. So I'm going to use the RKF45 method. So run cutter Felberg. Okay. And I'm going to use my step size control solver instead. Okay. And the method was RKF45. So this is just uh, this function name here. And I also need the tolerance, uh, which I haven't set. I'll set it to be t uh, one, uh, 10 to the minus 4. Okay, um, I'm just going to run that. Okay, so it hasn't it's run. So this is just the um, uh, this is a solution for the fourth one run cutter method. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to repeat that table for our new method. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and output the four five solution. So put in a couple of empty gaps. Okay. So there we have the four or five solution. What you'll notice is when we use a constant step length, you can see the differences between our t values are always the same. But here we're using um, a variable step length, so you can see the differences are, are all different. Okay. Uh, we could also plot the our uh, um, adaptive step size control solution alongside. So what I can do here. Is I'm just going to add another plot which is so that's the RK4 RK4 and I'm going to RK F45 and Y RK F45 okay I'm going to plot it using red line and my label is going to be uh, RK F45 okay uh, if we have compare the two solutions, so remember the fourth order run cutter method, this first step length was too large. Okay, so what we've done is we've actually used a much smaller step length. Okay, so the F Felberg method used a smaller step length because this one was too large um, and it's, uh, it was able to capture the solution.